Next on the news. Frequent flyers can now travel with faith as a new chapel opens at LaGuardia Airport. Pope Francis kicks off another papal trip despite recovering from a cold. A Brooklyn parish welcomes a new statue of Christ's crucifixion after the old one was attacked multiple times. Plus, from handling Hurricane Sandy to dealing with the COVID crisis, a DeSales Media employee is being honored for his years of invaluable service to the Diocese of Brooklyn. I'm Christine Persichetti. Courage News starts right now. Fourteen million passengers fly Delta Airlines in and out of LaGuardia Airport every single year. It's one of the busiest airports in the nation, and now there's a place where all those people, plus employees, can find peace. Current News' Jessica Eastope joins us now with more. Hi, Jess. Hi, Christine. This year, Delta Airlines opens its brand new state-of-the-art Terminal C. It's one of the reasons the Airports Council International says LaGuardia has gone from one of the worst airports in the world to one of the best and now represents the future of travel. Inside the 1.3 million square foot terminal is an interfaith chapel allowing travelers to fly with faith. Take a look. Whether it's for business or pleasure, for good news or bad, people fly. They all hope for safe travel, but now there's a place where they can pray for it. I leave something behind, but also take something with me, especially in a place that doesn't belong to anyone. Right? We all share it. Inside Delta's state-of-the-art Terminal C at LaGuardia Airport is an interfaith chapel. Sandwiched between gates 61 and 62, the chapel is a sanctuary, a place where people of all faiths can bring their bags but leave their baggage, block out the noise, and stay grounded. Airport chaplain Father Chris Piasta says the terminal will be further enriched by the people who use the chapel. Not only that it will be praying and blessing this sacred space, but they will allow others to take part of the blessing with them. The space was dedicated Tuesday. Representatives from the Catholic, Muslim and Jewish faiths gave blessings. <laughs> and underscored the importance of a room like this. These are new. The chapel, which sits about 35 people, has a standout feature. Architect Stefan Fried like says brings them. some old New York to the Stephen. new. These stained glass windows were from three original chapels at JFK Airport. They sat in storage for nearly 30 years and are now experiencing a rebirth here at LaGuardia. It's, you know, of course, very meaningful to have that bridge from the, you know, that time to today. Father Piasta's efforts to make the chapel a reality started back in 2016. After the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey offered a meditation room instead in the newly renovated Terminal B, DeSales Media's Director of External Affairs, Vincent Levienne, got involved. In early 2022, officials from Delta, DeSales, Port Authority, the chaplains and the governor's office met and Delta pledged to include a chapel in the new Terminal C. We do a lot of work that a lot of people don't see every day. And this is one of those small things that's going to impact thousands of people. That legacy, um, I'm truly honored to be a part of that. The tablet and specifically one of our senior reporters, Bill Miller, has been covering the story since the beginning. And likewise, Vincent Levienne and DeSales Media Group's external affairs team has been continuing to make the push for the chapel, fighting Christine for all faiths. Wow, that's great. Thanks, Jess. You can read all of that tablet coverage leading up to and including the opening of the chapel online at thetablet.org. Pope Francis took to the skies on Thursday, landing in Luxembourg as he began another papal trip despite still recovering from a cold. While on the plane, the pontiff did not greet the journalists individually as he usually does, saying he didn't feel up for the trip up and down the aisles. While the Pope has skipped these greetings before, this is the first time he's believed to have done so because of an apparent lack of stamina or energy. Still, once he landed, the Holy Father hit the ground running, addressing the authorities of Luxembourg with an appeal for peace as Europe continues to reel from the war in Ukraine and an ongoing migrant crisis. Luxembourgo può mostrare a tutti i vantaggi della pace rispetto all'orrore della guerra. 
de la integración y promoción de inmigrantes respecto a las loro segregaciones. Y su cuesto vi vi do tante gracias, quello spirito di accoglienza, di accoglienza dei migranti e anche darli una inserzione nella società vostra, questo arricchisce. Pope Francis also met with the Catholic community in Luxembourg before making his way to his next stop in Belgium. A statue of Christ's crucifixion is now proudly on display after multiple attacks at its Brooklyn Parish. Holy Cross Church dedicated and blessed this new gold medal statue while celebrating the 176th anniversary of the parish about a week ago. Years ago, a wooden statue of Christ crucified was stolen from its position on the cross and later found burned in a dumpster. While that image had been restored just a few months ago, it was struck again. This time, the statue's feet and legs were cut off at the knees. The parish contributed to replacing the statue, which arrived from Italy just in time for the feast of the exaltation of the Holy Cross. At another parish anniversary celebration in Jamaica, Queens, the faithful were so grateful Brooklyn Bishop Robert Brennan was there. He was signing autographs. Bishop Brennan helped ring in 120 years at St. Joseph, a parish that first began in 1904 when the Bishop of Brooklyn helped the growing Polish community there buy an old colonial house to use as a temporary church. While the parish would finish building their actual church three years later, they never forgot that it was the Bishop of Brooklyn who gave them the first down payment for their spiritual home. So members of the anniversary committee had Bishop Brennan sign their sashes. DeSales Media Group, parent company of Currents News, is also celebrating one of our own and someone you just met a short time ago in Jessica's story is being honored Thursday night at the Bishop's Humanitarian Awards. Vincent Levien, Director of External Affairs for DeSales, joins us now. Hi, Vinny. How are you, Christine? First Good to off, see you. Oh, so great to see you and congratulations, Thank first you so of much. all. I know that you're receiving the Bishop Joseph M. Sullivan Service Award, which is given to someone who devotes their life to the people of Brooklyn in Queens. So tell me, how does it feel to get this honor? You know, what was your reaction when you found out you were getting it? Truly honored. Uh, I actually knew uh, Bishop Sullivan. You know, oh. I've been doing uh, the government affairs, external affairs for the diocese for the past 13 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, many people know um, after, unfortunately, uh, the bishop passed away, Basie, his executive assistant, actually worked with us at the sales. So I got to hear amazing stories of, you know, God's work that the bishop did. And he's a true legend, you know, yeah. our Catholic charity is one of the largest Catholic charities in the country, you know, mm -hmm. feed the most people, house the most people, provide shelter for the most people, yep. and, yep. you know, to be receiving this award is, I'm truly humbled. Uh, wow. It's well deserved, and, you know, our, you. our viewers have seen you at it going firsthand, going back a decade ago with Hurricane Sandy mm -hmm. until now with the chapel at LaGuardia and all the work you put into that. So tell me a little bit about some of the things you do with Catholic Charities. Yeah, so unfortunately during Hurricane Sandy, you know, I received uh, numerous calls uh, helping um, the vital uh, the sit, uh, disaster relief centers that we had at sure. St. Francis mm -hmm. de Sales and uh, Blessed Trinity. So one of the things I did was immediately, um, you know, the bishop went down. Uh, as anybody knows, Breezy Point was devastated. Yeah. Rockaway was de devastated. Mm -hmm. The homes were completely wiped out. Mm -hmm. So Monsignor Brown at the time at St. Francis de Sales opened up the biggest disaster relief center in New York City. Yeah. And I was helping with a lot of the details, specifically with the government, bringing in generators and the logistics, of bringing in the food and the supplies. And I saw it back then. Catholic Charities had the largest disaster facility feeding thousands of people, bringing in clothes. Um, they did it in Breezy Point, and they, bit, they did it all over the diocese. Yeah. And I remember even back then, we couldn't get fuel on our cars, and I have to bring in Sister Ellen Patricia and Rob Siebel and basically filling up the, the vehicles on literally on a tarmac out of uh, Floyd Bennett Field wow. so our Catholic Charities cars could uh, go out and do the work that they did. Wow. Uh, the bishop, you know, obviously back then, uh, was uh, firsthand on the ground uh, going church to church, you know, as you can imagine, all of our churches, a lot of them were wiped out. Yeah. Uh, water, you know, was basically three or four feet high, not only in Breezy Point, but in Rockaway and Broad Channel and, and Howard Beach. Mm -hmm. And I saw firsthand what Catholic Charities does every day. Yeah, well, your work is very appreciated. Mm -hmm. Vincent Levy, and Director of External Affairs mm -hmm. for DeSales, thanks so much for being here and congrats mm -hmm. again. Thank you. All right, that is this current news update. I'm Christine Persichetti. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time.